Welcome back. You're watching Daybreak, and of course, you can talk to us by texting us on 2242 to be in a position to take a look at some of your feedback as soon as we can. Meanwhile, eight healthcare workers have succumbed to COVID-19 since the onset of the disease in the country five months ago. The death of a registered nurse, Mariana War, is the latest and one that has pushed the National, National Association of Nurses to question the level of preparedness in handling of COVID-19 patients in the country. Raquel Mugai has the details. At 32 years of age, registered nurse Marian Awar breathed her last at the Kisi Teaching and Referral Hospital, where she was admitted after contracting COVID-19. Her colleagues at the Rachonyo Sub-County Hospital in Homa Bay County came together in prayers to remember their colleague, who had given her life to diligently serve those in need, despite being eight months pregnant. Carry your candle, run to the Marian is the third registered nurse to have lost her life in the country to the COVID-19 disease. Marian Awor Adumbo, a 32-year-old registered nurse, used to render her selfless service at Rachuonio Sub-County Hospital. She passed on at the Kisi Teaching and Referral Hospital yesterday evening. She has left behind her less than a week old infant that she delivered at the hospital. Her death brings to eight the number of healthcare workers that we have so far lost to the disease in the country. The National Association of Nurses now wants the county governments to reassure health workers that their safety is of utmost priority to the government. As it was just a few days ago when the Kenya Bureau of Standards recalled masks that had been issued to health workers in Kisumu. Even as the nurses and the health care workers are donning the PPEs, they get torn in the process, even before they go to the clinical uh, environment. We've, we've examples of, of masks. You cannot even call a mask. Maybe it's, a, it, it, it's been extracted from a lesser. There could be PPEs that might be substandard, uh, being provided through other sources. We are, are very vigilant in making sure that the products that are used there, any health products and technologies that are out in use there, meet our requirements, our regulatory requirements and our standards. So far, over 600 health workers in the country have been infected with the virus. The rising number of infections among them, seeing some clinics and health centers shut down to contain the spread of the virus. The government and the employer has neglected their duties. And I'm telling you, in the next few days, the health workers will not be able to perform their duties as expected, and then we'll find ourselves in a mess. The National Association of Nurses demands that county governments should employ more health workers who have been adequately trained before the health system is overwhelmed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Raka Mugai, Citizen TV. All right, and that story takes us to the conversation with the president of the National um, uh, Nurses Association, Alfred Obengo. Good morning, Alfred. And I want to begin by offering our condolences to the fraternity of nurses, but also to ask you the exact circumstances, because the story that we saw on your post indicate that um, she had been tested several times, sometimes turning positive, others testing negative, uh, but still lost the battle uh, to the pandemic or to the disease. What exactly was happening? What was the situation of the care that she received? Uh, thank you, Sam, for having me around. As a nursing family, as the health sector uh, fraternity, we are still in a somber mood. Uh, you've said it clearly that we've lost uh, eight. Uh, and now this is the third nurse in, within our cadre that we, 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 we have lost. And uh, looking at the situation the way it is, we may be losing more people. We may get more health workers infected if something is not done very, very urgently. Um, mm -hmm. We've told the story of Marian severally, and uh, specifically she fell ill about one and a, two weeks ago uh, within her, her working uh, station, that is Rachuonyo. She developed breathing problems. She was uh, also pregnant for 32 weeks, and she was rushed to Homa Bay uh, mm -hmm. uh, County. Uh, but we, she, the, 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 the disease processed uh, worsened and uh, she got more breathless. 
Homer Bay County Hospital didn't have the facilities to take care of her, that still speaks volume on the preparedness of, of our county government so far as treating this disease is concerned. So she had to be rushed to, to, to Kisi teaching a referral hospital where she was uh, admitted in a, mm -hmm. a, a CU unit. Uh, by that time, she had, she had tested negative at the Homer Bay uh, facility. But upon being admitted uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. in ICU at Kisi referral uh, hospital, she was later <clears throat> tested again for the COVID under which she tested uh, positive. So because of the right. level of training, the level of preparedness within our people, there was a bit of scare within that ICU facility and she had to be transferred to an isolation unit because of the test re results. So in those uh, circumstances, there, was, there, may have, there may have been gaps here and there that uh, were not addressed. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's within that isolation facility. And, and, and that... Alfred, yes. If, if I may cut you short, so with um, the differences in the test results, are the professionals that were handling her saying anything about the disease? Something that maybe we didn't know, but now we are starting to learn from the story of Marion. Uh, with the difference of results, uh, we can go by the results we have, not the, the ones we don't have. Because even at, at last, uh, at the, the latest one, which was the results we got last Thursday before she passed on, was negative. But you can see at such a certain point she mm -hmm. tested positive, at a certain time she tested negative, and at a certain time she tested negative again. So th th there's also an issue of variance right. as far as the results are concerned. But now we are dealing with the situation as it were. I'm also informed that uh, from mm -hmm. her x-rays, she had lost one of uh, her lungs, which is a major, 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 major symptom of uh, the COVID uh, virus. So that situation. Right, that and let's talk about uh, the fate of uh, the healthcare workers now, because you understand that, yes, now the number has hit eight. Uh, the last time we spoke, I believe it was on the 13th of July, you were talking about uh, the PPEs that um, the healthcare workers are being exposed to. Has there been any improvement, especially to do with um, the county and sub-county hospitals across different uh, ca counties? Um, if there's any improvement, it's very, very little. It's like, it's like uh, a drop in the ocean. We've tried through also our partners to provide the same and complement and augment what the national and the county government is doing. But we want also to send a very strong message mm -hmm. to the county governments that we are not taking over their jobs with our partners as professional association. They must still do their jobs and perform their duties. And their biggest mandate is to protect the health workers insofar as this situation is concerned. So the PPE situation mm -hmm. is still very, very wanting. It's still very grim. It's worsened even more by the provision of substandard PPEs, which I think it's very, very unethical, very unprofessional to deliberately supply health workers with substandard PPEs just because you want to make some coins out of it. I, that is something that we continue condemning with the strongest words possible. People who are actually procuring substandard PPEs for, for health workers. You cannot actually extract a, a surgical mask from a lesser or from a gunia. We have a process where you, 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 how that those masks are made. We have the control, quality control measures that has, must be followed when you are manufacturing and producing those PPEs, which must be adhered to. So we are also asking the procurement uh, right. process uh, officers within our counties to include the users, the nurses, the clinical officers, the doctors within their technical evaluation committees so that they, they be able to, 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 to ascertain that the, quality, the, 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 the requisite quality measures control have been adhered to. Otherwise, we are going to kill more of our workers through those substandard PPEs. And Alfred, when you look at uh, the PPEs that I would uh, pre-expose um, the healthcare workers, have you been able to identify the maker, the source, and uh, where they came from so that then you can be in a position to take action? Like the one specifically for Kisumu, I, I want to congratulate the Kisumu leadership for coming out forward and actually even uh, communicating to Kenya Bureau of Standards on the same. And even a sample was taken to the Kenya Bureau of Standards. And the mask that was supplied by, by, by a supplier, I think uh, there's a company at uh, EPZ, were found to be substandard. 
So actually, that mm -hmm. that company should even be banned for, 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 from from supplying more PPEs to to, to 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 our health workers. So that one has been done. Investigations are going going on, and if we find any company mm -hmm. that has supplied our people with with the substandard PPEs, the the, the 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 long and short is that that company should be taken take responsibility and actually should be banned from supplying any more PPEs because that is supplying us with the de 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 death troops. All right, and Alfred, tell us about, uh, because I know that uh, there has been that encouragement that um, at different hospitals, once you report there, you need to declare uh, your status, you need to talk about uh, if you have any trouble history. Is this being adhered to, and especially to do with the public hospitals in the counties that would ensure that uh, the healthcare workers remain alert and take precaution? Um, I want to say very uh, firmly, and, uh, and I have to be very assertive on this, that... Uh, our systems are still very, very weak. In fact, uh, surveillance, uh, especially within, specifically within the health workers, is still very weak. You just put health workers on duty. You don't know whether they are where they have traveled to, where they where they've been, even the past week. You don't know where they are going to sleep. You don't know their status. Even the testing uh, processes are still very, very slow. So I can say our surveillance uh, status is still very, 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 very weak. And the countries which have, have managed, mm -hmm. if, we, if we can uh, specifically mention Singapore, who have managed to have minimal, minimal uh, infection uh, process, uh, within the health workers, they are actually very, very strict with infection prevention protocols and surveillance of their health workers to the extent that actually mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, they have very, very minimal deaths. So. To, to that extent, okay. we are still very, very weak, and there are so many gaps in so far as handling the staff that are uh, uh, handling this disease is concerned. All right, as we begin to end up, Alfred, tell us about, uh, because now we know eight have died. The last time we heard from the ministry, they were talking about more than 600 healthcare workers being infected uh, with the disease, most of them in line of duty. Do you have the numbers currently, especially to do with the nursing fraternity? Um, the, the numbers could be more, but uh, I, I, I promise that probably in the next week we'll be having the, the concrete uh, uh, numbers. But as of now, uh, we have over 600, 600 health workers who are infected. We are still compiling the specific number of nurses, but majority amongst the over 600 are, uh, are nurses. And this, the surge, insofar as the infection rate is concerned, is still also very, 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 very high. So, in fact, in Nairobi, we've closed mm -hmm. some clinic because of that. You, you, you get that over three quarters of your staff are, are tested positive. So the numbers are surging, and that's why we are saying we may, we may reach an extent whereby you'll go to a health facility and you'll find no health worker there. Not because they've gone on strike, but because probably they, either they are in, they're in isolation. Mm -hmm. Or they are in quarantine at home. That is the the the, 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 the situation, the grim situation we are facing. You'll go to a health facility to, to seek health right. services, and you'll have no one to treat you, my brother. That is what we are facing. If we don't sit, mm -hmm. we don't go back to the drawing drawing board, and sit and devise other strategies where which you can make us mitigate this issue urgently. And it's a very, very urgent call to the government. Let us go back to the drawing board because it seems like the, the systems that are employing, the, 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 uh, the strategies they're employing as of now, is they're not working. They're not working. It's a bit casual. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a casual okay. approach. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Alfred Obengo. He is the president of the Kenya National Nurses Association in the country. And, of course, uh, he's been talking about the death of Mariana Warren, a nurse that uh, was working at Frachonio Hospital but died after testing positive. But also there had been uh, some intervening um, negative tests, but all the same she lost her life. I don't know if you have her photo that we can uh, put on here so that we can uh, mourn with the family and uh, condole with the family uh, this difficult time, as you understand that uh, at least eight people have lost their lives in line of duty 
uh, as healthcare workers. So that is uh, Marian Awal, or Marian Awal, uh, who was announced at Karachunyo, uh, but uh, lost the battle to COVID-19. We we'll take a short break. On your return, we'll be looking at the state of the war. We'll be looking at the numbers that we have so far, indicating uh, the totality of the infection in the country, about 22,000, over, over 22,500. We'll be looking at the trends and especially looking at the numbers and how they changed in the month of July and uh, where uh, the country is heading in this month of August. We are back with that.